And we're live. Hello and welcome back. Um, today I want to introduce you to two new colours in the SAA watercolour range. Um, transparent orange and ultramarine violet. Transparent orange, we do have an orange in the SAA range, but it's opaque. So a transparent orange really will be able to bring out the wonderful brightness of the paper. So we'll have a look at these. And then ultramarine violet, so it's a wonderful blue violet. And as you s the wash um, is done, the violet starts to come, come out. And it's really, well, probably going to be one of my favourite colours. So what we'll do is we'll have a little swatch of each colour just to see what they do. So this is the transparent orange. So it's a lovely, bright, rich, fresh orange. Okay. Well, not enough. I might change brushes actually, I think. It's a bit too small. Just a minute, bear with me. When you're doing swatches, I find that you need a nice big soft brush because that just brings out the full potential of the paint. So that was a natural hairbrush, a Kalinske, but it was just going to make me work quite small. And I do find people tend to pick up a small brush to do work with, and actually it will be a bigger brush that gives you the full range of colour you're looking for. The reason it's going like this is it's just not wet enough. A natural hairbrush needs to be really wet right through the hair. So you wet it, you wet it again, then you wet it some more, just so the middle of the brush then gets wet. Let's see if I can... That's better. And it's all to do with wetting your brush. Just see those lovely, um, rich oranges coming through. So let's have a look. Just clean my brush so it's not so contaminated. And I am going to use my clean water this time. Just make sure it gives that colour. When you're doing a swatch, you need good clean water each time for each colour, just so you don't contaminate. Look at that beautiful colour coming through already. So plenty of water. Look at that lovely rich colour and as I go and start to get my brush wetter the violet will start to come through as it dries so I think really lovely colours and coincidentally they're actually very complementary to each other didn't realise that when they were being introduced but orange and this um, purple blue they actually enhance each other and complement each other just two colours, so let's, I'll do a little demonstration and I'll keep it really simple. Orange, I'll do a segment of an orange, one that's been peeled and you've just got the segments. Because this, I want to show the full range of tones you can get from just one colour. So, let me have a little sketch. I need to do it in the middle because that's where it's focused, but I've used a lot of space with the swatches. Look at the violets coming out here. This is the wonderful colour and it will continue to have that lovely violet glow. Okay, so orange segments. I've counted the segments. They range between, I think it's about eight and ten. I'm just going to go round. Just thinking about the shape. I have looked at the shape, worked out simple shapes, but I just want to give you a simple idea of how these colours can be used really simply. So, rounded, just show the one, two, three, four, five, six, I might have seven or eight. They all go into the middle and they come out. Yeah, so the best thing to really do is to have a segment of orange in front of you. But I think that works. You can see it's an orange segment. So if you do want to do a subject, have it in front of you or have a, a photograph. Like I say, I have 
looked at this and studied it so it gives me a good idea so let's start with the orange so actually i'm going to start with wax resist now this is going to be a really simple quick and easy composition and most of the work will be done using my wax resist stick i found that i have sharpened because they tend to dull quite quickly um, you can sharpen it in a pencil sharpener but i find that clogs up so i'm just using a painting knife and i just gently scrape to a, a nice finer point and then that just gives me a little bit more control control in the width of line but i have very little control about where it goes because i can't always see so a lot of it is hit and miss and this is part of the beauty of it so i'm just going to go round now an orange has once it's peeled has that white kind of pith around on the surface rather than the lovely clean fresh juicy insides so this is what i want to try and look at but like i say i can't actually see where it's going maybe if i tilt my head no nope, can't see anything so this is part of the fun of using a wax resist stick and i'm not pushing very hard and i'm dabbing it around hoping i've got everywhere so a few lines and squiggles this one will have a few more it has a line down the middle this will have that line it's potluck where i've put everything watch when I put a nice thin layer of the orange on so a thin layer because I want to build up layers and with any watercolour it will dry at about half the strength but look at those lovely textures you've got from using the wax resist it's pretty much painting itself that's why I like using it. So very simple, quick little demonstration. Just to show you the colours. And what I'm going to do while it's still wet is just drop a little bit stronger colour here and there. Just so it blends and bleeds in and starts to add a little bit more tonal values. Still only this one colour, but look at all those colours coming through already. Again, I can keep coming back and adding different strength. Just thinking about the darker areas, which will be underneath and around where they overlap. need to let that dry and while that's drying I'm going to put the, a little bit of shadow on. the reason being is I want some of that orange to bleed into the shadow because with the light depending on the surface you will get a bit of color bounce back so if I put it on now look at that fabulous color hopefully I'll get some of the orange running into what a wet brush Just trying to hopefully get some of this orange to run in here we go starting to run into just use the texture of the paper at the moment and see how that orange is running into the um ultramarine violet that really look at shadow you will get some of that color that's just a quick initial wash because i i want it to dry to be able to get um much more controlled shadow but I'm going to see if I can add another little bit of orange. I don't know if I've come to the full strength. So now just using the tip of my brush, you can just see there. I'm not overly worried about where things go. This is how it's really nice to do a simple little subject. Because actually you can be quite surprised how effective it ends up. Just thinking about what detail they have in each segment. 
There we go. It's going to be a little bit darker in the middle as they fold over into the middle. Might not be able to catch it because there could be wax resist on there. But that's looking really quite nice. Or with just that really one colour. And it's a really good exercise, I find, to try and use just one colour every now and then. You just have to really look, about, look at the tonal values that you can achieve. Light colours like this orange, you have a limited range. Your strongest range is still quite light. Whereas if you choose a dark colour like indigo or this ultramarine violet, you've got a much stronger range. Um, because it's a darker colour to start with, so you've got a much wider and longer range. So you have a little bit more um, colour range. Okay. This is a transparent orange, so it's going to show some of the light. I don't want to fiddle too much because I don't want to lose some of the um, light areas I've put on. Right, I think I'll take a short break because I want that to dry and then I'll come back and I'll start to add much darker tones on. So join me in a minute after this short break and then we can just really start to finish and add a little bit more uh, tone of value on this orange. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines. It's be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Welcome back. In that short break, I... so you're, we're losing you completely. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Apparently we've got a problem with the mic. Um, oh, is it okay to carry on? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, I forgot where I was now. Going. Yeah, Thanks. A question that. from Rania. Okay, question from Rania. What was I using? This is um, a wax resistic, so it's a clear wax crayon. But it's really nice to just give you those natural feel kind of textures little bit difficult to see but I think that's part of the beauty of it so yeah just simply put on and it resists it you don't need to remove it it's there permanently so it's an alternative to masking fluid which gives you a nice sharp line and then you rub off this you put on and get these quite textured natural looking lines so in that short break I've had chance to continue to look at the orange and I can think about areas I want to work on but just look how beautiful this is so this is a granulating color because you can see how it granulates this is why you do swatches you then can see how the color will look so it's a granulating color look at those fabulous granulations which I think I'm going to use it quite a lot as background color look at the pinks coming out that violet color the transparent orange very flat color what I'm just going to do, I thought about it in the break, which is why you have a break. So I want to see how lifting colours are, how staining they are. Uh, it may tell you on the tube, it may tell you on the colour chart, but it doesn't tell you on what papers they stain on, you know, 
can you lift them off in any way? So this is why you do a little bit of practicing beforehand. So this is a synthetic brush. I just want to, oh, I think that's going to lift off really nicely. So that's not an overly staining color, which is really useful if you're using this for flowers or you're using it in techniques where you want to be able to get that lift back. So let's have a look at the ultramarine. I will do it in the darker area. So still a little bit of staining on that orange. Ooh. So the ultramarine lifts back almost white. And I, I purposely did it in quite a dark area. Oh, Anita. Yes. Another quick question for you. Your little metal water pot. Oh, I love my little wet metal water pot. I can't pot. find it on the website. What, what, help me. Help me find it. BW. Okay. I think. Right here, I'll, I'll find the link and send you the link. Okay. Yeah, it's a really useful little tool. I was training um, some of the girls in our office, so they have hands on skills um, of products and they've touched new products, they've seen them for you. And I would doing oil paints, and I have one of these which has um, a low odor thinner in it. And I keep it topped up. I don't need to keep cleaning it. It's a self-cleaning unit. You have a little agitator here, which is great for cleaning your brushes. And what happens is in oil paints, the heavy pigment sinks to the bottom and gives you a nice clean um, solvent each time. Just pop the lid on. So it's a nice sealed unit. And I use it for turps. This one has water in it because it's a handy little unit to carry. So it is actually one of my products and I just a neat little. We keep losing you. You're back so now. You're back now. I'm not doing it on purpose. Apparently there's a problem with my try not to move maybe it's because I'm moving around. Uh, okay. One more question. Yes. Uh, from Stephen. I know the answer to this one, <laughs> but you can tell him. Steve wants to know whether you leave the wax resist on. Yes. Yes it's on there. It's you put it on, you leave it on. It's just like putting a wax crayon on. You heat it off, you rub it off, you can't rub it off. Masking fluid is the one you lift off. This you leave on, and it just resists any colour. So, this has had time to dry. So you've got much more tonal values. You can see where you need to add a little bit more dark. So what I'm going to do, I think I've got a lot of things on this palette and you can't see mixing. So I'm just mixing a darker colour which is using that ultramarine violet and the orange. And just now start to add a little bit. So what I didn't say about the colours were, the orange is transparent, but the hand says it's in the table. The ultramarine violet is semi-opaque, so much more covering power um, than the orange. I also have written down their permanent pigments. Just something that I can remember quite quickly. You may not need to do a big swatch like this. You can do it on little pieces. But for reference, it helps me to know what colours are in it. So the ultramarine violet, it's actually quite obvious colours that you'd expect, pigments you'd expect in um, an ultramarine violet. Ultramarine, PB29. You're, you look at your ultramarine, French ultramarine, and that's the pigment you have in it. So it's got the ultramarine pigment and it's got a violet pigment, PB, PV, so pigment violet, and that's where the violet colour is coming from. Um, looking at pigments is, is really interesting. Don't need to get overwhelmed by them. If you like a colour, you like a colour. But if you like a colour in one brand and you may be looking for it in another, it's actually quite difficult because each brand it's made in different countries by different um, chemists. So they will vary. And one company will call one colour one thing. Another company will call it the same thing, but it will look very different. This is just the way it is. But knowing or looking at your pigment, you call index pigment numbers, does help. So if you see PB29 in a French ultramarine, you will actually see that colour and it will be fairly consistent. And it's just a way of seeing that 
you kind of expect the colour, but this is a little bit more advanced than just going for a colour and liking it. So, just using, and because you've got, this is semi-opaque and semi-transparent, I think that's, it's just a really very fine line between transparent and opaque. Um, I'm, I'm not sure all suppliers even do the semi bit because it, it doesn't really tell you something. But what I know is with the semi-opaque colour, it's going to be stronger to be able to cover any areas um, that I need. And the beautiful transparent will give me that glow of paper. Just need to step back. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep fiddling, which we probably don't because it often does it itself. I'm just going to, now it's dry, I'm just going to put a dark shadow under the orange. And by putting this dark shadow on, what it's going to do is give me my darkest area. And sometimes the darkest area is not always the shadow. Just getting it to move slightly. What that does is it shows that that orange is sitting on something, but it looks a little odd. So I need just put some dark colour in the orange. I'm Gary will need to fix that. Now I can just, just see, because that was the darkest tone, I can just now add more without over working. Using the tip of this brush, just to give a little bit, and then think about. I'm not sure if you can hear me, I may be just talking to myself. They're not going to know that you don't know whether they can hear. I ain't got my headphones on. Hold on. <laughs> sorry, everyone, if you can't hear us. All right, okay, it seems to be working now. Okay, uh, sorry if you've had problems with the sound. It seems like the mic hasn't been working very well, so I could have just been talking to myself, which is not unusual. Um, I think that for me, without going, I'll just keep working too far and I'll end up losing the colour. So. Just a quick little demonstration, just to show the practicalities of using these colours. So the new transparent orange, so a, a nice, clean, crisp, fresh colour. And you can see with how well it actually lifts. It doesn't lift as cleanly as the ultramarine violet, but it does lift. It stains a little bit, but you, you are able to take some of that colour down. The French, the ultramarine violet, which I think like I say, it's a really fabulous colour. Granulating, so you can see that from here, lifts back really nice and cleanly. So think of it in a sky or an area you just want to suddenly get those white areas and you haven't resisted them. You can lift back and look at the beautiful violet tones that ping out. See how these colours actually complement each other and how it can be used. I think it's going to be a great shadow colour as well as background colour. So I hope you enjoyed that, just introducing those two new colours um, so you, you're aware of them. And join us next week for a live workshop with, sorry, with Vic Bearcroft. <laughs>